February 21st, 1901. Mr. Tuttle and Acker were appointed a committee to correspond with Andrew Carnegie in regard to a bequest. R.M. Tuttle, Chairman, 33rd Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1901. An application has been made during the past year by friends of the library to Mr. Carnegie, whose munificent gifts to institutions of this kind, as so well know, but we do not learn that a reply has been received. There would seem to be no difficulty here in complying with the condition he places on a gift of, say, $20,000 or $30,000. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 34th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1902. 1903. The managers are pleased to report the offer made by Andrew Carnegie to the city of Hornellsville to give $25,000 for the erection of a library building on the condition that a site be provided and that $2,500 be appropriated annually for the care and maintenance of the library. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. This is a munificent offer, one that has never before been made to this city and probably never will be made again. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. In order that there might be no chance for its refusal, the managers took the responsibility of offering to the city the present library site, together with the library itself, to make complete the gift to the city of both a new building and a well-selected library of 13,000 volumes to carry it. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. The Common Council accepted both offers of Mr. Carnegie and that of the library. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. 1903. It has been felt, however, that the present site is not entirely satisfactory for the new library building and some efforts have been made to secure a more commodious and slightly location. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. We wait the action of the city authorities. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. The expense, if any, should not be great and is a mere trifle compared with that usually undertaken by cities that have accepted Mr. Carnegie's offers. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 35th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1903. Mr. Carnegie's munificent gift of $25,000, although accepted by the Council, still remains unused and no action has been taken for its use, so far as we can learn. Beyond the acceptance of an architect's plan for a building designed for erection in the city park, R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 36th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1904. If the Carnegie Building is not to be obtained very soon, an appeal must be made to the people of this city for the money required to enlarge the building we already have. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 36th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1904. The uncertainty of the last three years awaiting the action of this city relative to the offer of Mr. Carnegie to construct a building for the library has interfered somewhat with the progress that might otherwise have been made. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 37th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1905. It is apparent, however, that Mr. Carnegie's offer, as made, will not be accepted. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 37th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1905. Enlargement must be made if the needs of the library and its patrons are to be supplied, and if Mr. Carnegie's money is not acceptable, appeal must be made for liberal donations at home. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 37th Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1905. The subject of a Carnegie Library has been before the association for several years without making material progress. It has now been definitely ascertained that the money for its erection is available. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 41st Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 
1909. A suitable lot has been found and the Common Council has caused the City Charter to amend so as to provide for the support of such a library. As soon as the Governor signs the new Charter, it will be possible to purchase the property we have in view to erect up on it a Carnegie Library without more delay. R. M. Tuttle, Chairman, 41st Annual Report, Hornell Library Association, 1909. Mrs. B. R. Wakeman, Vice President of the Association Speech. This is an occasion of great personal pride and gratification to each individual member of the Board of Managers of the Hornell Library Association, and we hope to every citizen of the city. When the valuable books accumulated through years of care and solicitation have at last found a permanent home in this beautiful structure, the gift of Andrew Carnegie to the people of Hornell. Evening Tribune, March 28, 1911. When the bank began in 1919, there were six people that worked at the bank, um, and they did everything by hand. You know, they literally wrote things by hand. Um, and then since then, the uh, the different branches have opened up, and now we're we're actually up to 14 different branches located all across Western New York, from uh, Allegheny to Whitesville, and most recently, we're looking to build a branch up in Clarence, New York. president of the bank was a Dr. Claire S. Parkhill, and you can see a picture of him there. Nice, nice old picture. I always like looking at those. They're kind of neat. Now, he uh, wrote a little thing in his annual report that said, persistent savings is the only kind that counts and is the foundation of thrift. is actually a national organization and it was founded by U.S. wartime veterans actually in Paris on March 15th, 1919. And the cool part about that is in 1919 here in Hornell, um, the Arthur H. Cunningham Post was founded and their first commander's name was Archie Blades. And if you ever get a chance to go into the Hornell American Legion Post, they have pictures of all their commanders from 1919 up until today's current commander, which is actually the very first female commander here in Hornell. Our IDA, it's called the Indust City of Hornell Industrial Development Agency. And it was formed by the state of New York to do economic development in Hornell and to create jobs in Hornell and create a better 
a better quality of life for the people in Harnell. That was kind of what they, what they asked us to do.